buenos días a toda la gente, mi gente que nos acompaña a todas partes de los Estados Unidos, de México, Centroamérica, de todo el hemisferio. Bienvenido, Catarina. Me da gran gusto a ver esta reunión de activistas que vienen de las filas del de pueblo trabajador latino, inmigrante y todos nuestros aliados viendo, mirando hacia el futuro presentándose los retos y las preguntas estratégicas de cómo vamos a mover a nuestro pueblo y sus intereses hacia adelante mientras seguimos contribuyendo a crear una mejor sociedad en los Estados Unidos en todo el hemisferio americano y al mismo tiempo cómo vamos a transformar el mundo para todo ser humano les digo esto reconociendo que en más de 30 años de activismo comunitario que nos llevó a participar en la política electoral no es la política electoral lo que nos define, lo que nos confina, lo que nos categoriza en el mundo. No es lo más importante, es una herramienta más para el cambio positivo y la transformación más profunda que requiere el mundo, que requiere este país, que requieren las ciudades y los barrios donde vive nuestra gente. Voy a hacer mis comentarios en inglés porque así los preparé. Eh, sé que el tiempo es limitado, así es que les encargo a los intérpretes, tengan mucho cuidado. Y donde yo la riegue, hagan el favor de corregir, ¿ok? Así es que yo no soy el papa, aunque me cae bien y parece que dice muy buenas cosas, ¿no? All right. So, uh, I'm really delighted to be here this morning with this group and this gathering of national and international actors. I just returned from the Distrito Federal uh, last night where we went to engage and to have conversations with non-government actors, NGOs, nonprofits in the DF who are advancing some of the most progressive policies as it relates to migrants in the hemisphere and in the world. And of course the urgency of developing those types of policies is great everywhere because of the great migrations of the world and those that will continue to be such because of things like climate change, uh, an issue of our times. But what I wanted to share with you this morning was not so much a political program and some ideas that I have for how we can move forward, but rather a little bit of what everyone else has done. Share a little bit of our story, of our experience and what has brought us to this place. In many respects, I'm very different from the previous speakers because I'm the oldest of the previous speakers at 59 years and trying to stretch with that out as much as possible hasta que llegue el cumpleaños del año que viene, ¿verdad que sí? Solidarity from the older ones, that's suppose, out there. But I gotta tell you, I arrived in Chicago 50 years ago. Tenía nueve años de edad. Llegué al barrio que está como a ocho cuadras de aquí y he vivido en este vecindario desde entonces. Ahora vivo en la villita, moving on up type of thing, over here. We have bigger backyards, we got a little more grass, the house is a little bit newer, but it's really all the same. It's still the barrio in Chicago. So I've been an inhabitant of the barrio for 50 years. One of the most impactful transformations in my life as an adolescent was becoming a member of an organization in Chicago that was probably the first to openly defend the rights of the undocumented in Chicago. Casa Hermandad de Trabajadores was the name of the organization. They used to operate in the Pilsen community and in the Little Village community, and it's where I got my political education. It was a left-oriented organization whose history was rooted in 
the politics of left opposition groups in Mexico and Latino America, but it was an organization that provided me with a working class perspective of viewing the world. And for many years, the organization did not believe in electoral politics. And we founded other organizations and coalitions, as you, as you have done in cities across the country, to defend the basic rights of immigrants, to fight for living wages, to fight racism, and of course, more recently, as you have led the charge, to fight for the rights of everyone, regardless of their sexual identity. That is human progress, and our community has participated in that progress in this country and in the hemisphere. So, with all of the community activism, on education issues, on health issues, on employment issues, and fighting against racism and discrimination, we came to a very important change in Chicago, 1983, when the majority of the people in Chicago had become people of color. African American, Latino, Asian, and others. And it was in 1983 that we got lucky. The machine was fight, the political machine in Chicago was fighting uh, among itself. And we had decided just a couple of years earlier that we had to get involved in the electoral arena. Why? Because Chicago was already 14% of the population. Yet, we had not one representative in Chicago City Council, not one state legislator in Springfield, and legislators in Springfield were toying around with concepts like employer sanctions, denying rights to the undocumented, denying basic public ed education to children in Chicago public schools, <laughs> denying emergency services to immigrants in hospitals and clinics in Illinois. That's why we went to lobby against those measures back in 1977. And you know what we found? That we were invisible. Not one Latino or Latina in the state capitol, not one Latina or Latino in the Chicago City Council. Invisible, powerless, unrecognized. We decided that had to change, and as we debated, how do you engage in electoral politics given Chicago's history of its political machine, known for its corruption, its racism, and its sexism. How do you engage and not get tainted? We came up with a concept, independent political action, and staying true to organized basis in those communities and building organizations that would require public regular meetings para brindar para rendir cuentas a la gente que posiblemente los iba a elegir. These were the beginnings of an effort to replace the machine politics of Chicago. Again, exemplifying racism, corruption, and sexism, the exclusion of women back in 1980-1983. And in 1983, we elected the first African-American mayor in the city of Chicago, a progressive member of Congress who had stood for immigration reform, who had spoken out against military intervention in Central America, who had the best voting record with labor and unions and working people in Congress. That was the new mayor in Chicago. It was a turning point in electoral politics in the city of Chicago and nationally. And he had led the fight against Reagan and Reaganomics in our country, saying we need to put people first before profits. That was the essence of the political movement in 1983. It was a progressive coalition of African Americans and Latino activists that elected Hell Washington with just enough progressive white voters in Chicago that made history in 1983. I know my time is running out. So I could walk you through how the Harold Washington administration became the most representative administration in the city's history. I could tell you about the executive order that he issued the first in the country saying that the city would not cooperate with the media, we would not interrogate, we would not share information, we would not tolerate them on city premises, etc., etc. But I won't, although I just did. <laughs> a little bit of a taste. But that election was very, very significant. It also opened up the doors of 
of government and politics with Latinos, and since then, we've elected up to eight members of the Chicago City Council. I don't know how many members of the state legislature, but they now have a Latino caucus. It's not the most progressive entity in the country, but that's why you're here today, because you're going to replace some of them, right? And in other cities as well, and in other states as well, right? Because that is what the challenge for our community is, particularly the overwhelming number of people here who are young. I got elected to the city council in 1986, fighting against a discriminatory ward map, utilizing the instrument of the Voting Rights Act, and proving that the map in Chicago was unfair to Latinos and African Americans. When we won the court fight and special elections were ordered, it was a new day in Chicago, a new era of political empowerment with great promise, but Harold Washington died a year into his second term in office. The coalition shattered into so many pieces that we have yet to recover in Chicago, and thus we have been played one community against the other. The strategy of divide and conquer, the emergence of big money in politics, and it's exemplified by the present mayor of Chicago is what has happened in Chicago. That is why I believe that we need a political revolution in this country. And that is one of the reasons, and I don't know where you're at, that I've decided to endorse Bernie Sanders for president of the country. Because it's important that the money interests in our country, the families who donate exorbitant and millions and millions of dollars to control politicians in Washington and state legislatures and even in city councils must be replaced. We need a political revolution in so many ways to end the inequality that has held people back and eroded the basic gains that people made during the 60s and 70s in this country. There's also a very important economic agenda. But I'm not here to talk about Bernie Sanders. I'm here to talk about us. That's right. And here is what I want to tell you. I see Tanya giving me a look. <laughs> and I went off script. Thanks for the help, uh, Libby. <laughs> Here's what I want to say. I'm trying to get me to say some very relevant things. Before I talk about what I think could be essentials in building, especially a progressive coalition in your city, in my city, in cities across America, I want to just pause because I was going to leave with this, but I got kind of excited and I let off in Spanish y todo cambió. I want to tell you this. You are in Chicago during the greatest and most tumultuous time that the city has lived in the past half a century. The protests and the calls that are being made by activists throughout the city are unprecedented. People are asking me, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? Should we be getting ready? I hope you've been ready because you're the king that's in our society here. But the events of the past two weeks are very, very significant because they have taken the cover off of our criminal justice system and its failures and demonstrated to all of us, including myself, Carlos Garcia, my primo de Sonora, about the failings of the criminal justice system, the racism, the unfairness of it, the criminalization that goes on, we knew about it from our own experience in the immigrant community and the detention of immigrants, the privatization of the correctional system, a larger part of the incarceration complex that we have and industry that we have in our country. But the things that are going on in Chicago are extremely, extremely important because the potential for building a new progressive coalition in Chicago are again unprecedented in 50 years. I made reference to how the coalition shattered after the death of Harold Washington, a progressive who went through his charismatic abilities and through his intellect brought the right people together at the right time, but a new coalition needs to be rooted in neighborhoods and people all over Chicago. 
And Chicago is only an example of what can happen in cities everywhere in this country. From New York to Los Angeles to Phoenix to Dallas and Houston, etc., etc. Don't mean to exclude the Southeast también and the New South that is emerging because of the growth of the Latino community. Que viva el sur, ¿verdad que sí? El nuevo sur, ¿verdad que sí? But let me suggest what are some points of unity and that can be part of local programs to build greater trust, greater collaboration between nuestra gente, mi gente, and African Americans, and Asians, and communities that are struggling for equality like the LGBT community, and environmental activists who have pushed things forward and got us a new agreement. I don't know what to think about the new agreement, I'm still studying it, I'm not you know, one of the environmental leaders in, our, in, in the globe, but it is exciting and it is unprecedented. Let me suggest a few things to build unity around in our communities. One, restore the Voting Rights Act. The Supreme Court gutted key sections of it. They need to be restored. If not, the billionaire classes and the millionaires of our country will have succeeding in turning the clock back and it will stop and make it more difficult to empower our community to get people like you elected to important legislative and executive offices across the country. Power at the local level is so, so important. So restoring the Voting Rights Act and the key provisions within it. Two, criminal justice reform across the country. Now that the facade was torn off of the criminal justice system in Chicago, it is essential that African Americans and Latinos continue that movement everywhere in Chicago. Significant change is the promise of the day in Chicago of our criminal justice system in Chicago and Cook County to address topics of incarceration, sentencing, bail policies, the disproportionate impact on African Americans and Latinos. Police accountability, a key aspect of the protests which have occurred over the past two years in Chicago. How do you change the culture in the police department? How do you make it more responsive, not just grow its numbers, as Carlito pointed out? It isn't a comprehensive solution to the problem. Universal single-payer health system in our country. The Affordable Care Act has helped many people who were uninsured before become insured, but it is still a law that favors insurance countries and big money interests in our country. We need universal single payer because that's the only way that everyone who is poor is going to be able to have quality health care in our country. Jobs legislation. We need a federal jobs bill to rebuild America's infrastructure in cities, in metro areas, in small towns, our highway system, our bridges, important public works projects. Why is that important? Because that is the only way we can create a massive number of jobs, train people for those jobs, and put people back to work, and stimulate the economy so that there is greater prosperity, especially when we throw the big guys who have controlled their politics for such a long time from their positions of influence through innovative legislation like small donor uh, approaches to politics to keep the big money out of politics. Solidarity with the LGBTQ community. For those of us who have been around in electoral politics for 30 years, the transformation that occurred all over this country, the change of mindset among ordinary people that occurred because of the activism in the LGBT community is a most valuable lesson for progressives today that want to transform the world and who are considering how to get involved in politics and not get tainted with some of the worst aspects of electoral politics in America. And it's not just America as in the United States of America, it's also America as in Mexico, Central America, and South America. We all face the same problem with the wealthy wanting to dictate and control politics and policies emanating from our government. So the continued solidarity with the LGBTQ community 
with climate change activists are important basis of redefining a new coalition, a progressive coalition that seeks progressive policies, that recognizes that there are limits in our earth and that we've got to save the earth, that we have to have an equity agenda in order for every human being to be respected points like that, will we be able to, first of all, take power, and second of all, have governments and sustainable governments across the country and across the globe that are rooted in recognizing that every human being and their labor power is essential and that a new paradigm is needed for politics and for people power in the 21st century. Mi gente, saludos, que tengan mucho éxito hacia adelante y hasta la historia. Muchas gracias.